kind of a, a present interlude. There's nothing very complicated about this. And the next one is a present, a pleasant interlude. But then the two that follow, uh, <laughs> lots of aspirin. Okay. So what we're going to do next is fluids. We're going to do statics and dynamics for fluids. And after that, we're going to do accelerated reference systems and then special relativity. Okay, so fluids. Now, by fluids, what I'm going to mean is <coughs> anything which shows very little resistance to shears. You can have some, but very little resistance to shears. I don't care whether it compresses or not. Initially, we're going to deal with situations, what we would call liquids, which do not compress significantly. But what we're going to do will apply in most situations to gases as well. So, Let's look at a fluid, like a liquid. Now, let's suppose you have this liquid confined in some sort of container. The liquid has some density rho. And we assume it has no viscosity, so that it does not object to shears. Now, Let's imagine we look at a little box of the fluid. In this thing. Now, the fluid is at rest. Just got the jar sitting here. So, what must be the net forces on that little chunk of material? Gotta be zero, right? If it wasn't, there would be an acceleration, the thing would not stay at rest. So, the net force on this has to be zero. All right, now, we know that pressure is force per area. So let's set up a coordinate system here in which this is x, y into the board, and z vertical. Now let's look at the forces, the x planes. In other words, the planes, this one and this one. That face and that face. Since it's not moving, not accelerated, the force must be zero. But the force is the pressure on this face times its area, pushing that way, and the pressure over here, pushing that way. Right? Since there's no acceleration, the pressures must be the same on this side as on that side. Similarly on the back face and the front face. So, Conclusion number one, at the same depth in the fluid, because that's this face and this face, they're the same distance from the top, the pressure must be the same. And that must be the same no matter how far away I move. So the first observation is that the pressure can be a function only of the depth. It can't be a function of the horizontal position. So the pressure at the same depth anywhere in the fluid must be the same. That's just simply Newton's second law. All right, now the force must also be um, zero in the z direction, in the vertical direction. But now, pressure is not the only force. Now, I have a pressure Let's measure z from the bottom here. That's the way I've drawn it. 
if this space is z and this is z plus dz, so here is z plus dz, then the forces on this are the pressure at z pointing upward times the area of that box, which is dx dy, minus the pressure at z plus dz, which is pushing down, times dx dy. But that's not all. Because in addition, you have the weight of the fluid in that box. And that is the mass times the acceleration of gravity. And so that's down minus rho times the volume dx dy dz times gravity. And the sum is what must be equal to zero. So I divide out the dx dy's. And now I divide by dz. And I have d of z minus p of z plus dz divided by dz minus rho g is equal to zero. And so I move this to the other side, take the limit, dz goes to zero, and that is the derivative. And so I get dp dz is equal to minus rho g. But I can solve that <coughs> equation immediately because that's just a constant multiplied by dz and integrate. So I have dp is equal to minus rho g dz. Integrate from z equal from p at um, z equal zero to p at the depth of that depth, dh. Integrate from zero to h. Now, the pressure at the top is just due to the atmosphere. So the pressure up here, above at the top of the fluid, the only thing I have here is the air pushing down. And so the top of that is P0, which is the atmospheric pressure, minus P at the bottom, P at Z equals 0, the bottom of the pond, is equal to minus rho G times H. So the pressure at the bottom at Z equals 0 is atmospheric pressure plus rho g h. This is exactly what you would have expected. The pressure at the bottom is the force of the atmosphere per area plus the weight of the column of liquid above you. Of course it is. Because you've got to support the weight of that column of liquid. The only thing that supports it is the pressure down here. So nothing mysterious about this. Making sense? All right. Now, the next next observation, then we'll quit, is suppose I were to remove this liquid, freeze the liquid in place for a moment, take this out, insert a hollow box so that the walls are fixed. <coughs> Free the liquid. Have I changed the forces on the box any due to the fluid? No, because the fluid is now exactly as it was before. I froze it and I released it. But now, the forces on the box are simply the forces due to the fluid. They are exactly the weight of the water or fluid that was in this box. Because before, all the forces on it 
exactly balance the weight of this thing. So now, when I put it back in empty, the forces on it are still what they were before, namely the weight of that. Which means that the fluid produces a buoyant force tending to push this thing up, which is equal to the weight of the fluid that was in there. Make sense? We'll talk more about it tomorrow. So there's a buoyant force, which is the weight of the fluid that is displaced. That is called Archimedes' principle, and is the reason boats floats and all the rest of it. And we'll work that out in detail next time. Any of you didn't get the homework assignments here? <laughs>